Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Really sorry it's been so long. We've had a uh, crazy few months and uh, even uh, more weirdly, we're currently in July, baking 30 degree heat, as you can probably tell from outside. And uh, we're gonna do some reviews of some sled dog harnesses, which is uh, totally inappropriate for the weather, uh, but there is a, a good reason for it. We were gifted, or not gifted, we were loaned a couple of harnesses by the great guys over at Sporty Paws uh, earlier this year, uh, well, right at the beginning of the year in winter. Uh, we tested both of them out um, running several times a week uh, through basically all of spring. And we were going to culminate that with the last checking in challenge of the year to give you a full review for kind of a half season and uh, an active race um, to see how they performed. Now, unfortunately, the last check-in of the year didn't go too well for us. Uh, we didn't have any great, we, basically we couldn't run. So we went there and I broke the bike on my uh, recon lap on the Friday and that was it, that was game over. We had a nice weekend, but we couldn't race and we couldn't give you a review of the harness. So I've been thinking, well, I was thinking for the next couple of weeks after that, how do we go about um, resolving uh, the video and the review to give you, you know, the most meaningful uh, explanation of what these harnesses are like and then a wave of other stuff hit us and we just got too busy and we weren't running the dog so we weren't really thinking about it because it was too warm and so here we are so enough of ado I'll get on with it we'll chop and change this video a bit probably to give you some kind of thoughts from now as well as the thoughts from several months ago which you're going to see in a second and any questions hit us up in the link below and make sure you check it out supportypaws. I can't remember if it's .com or .co.uk, so we'll find out in a minute. Cheers. Hey everybody, welcome to Sherwood once again. Uh, the snow has finally gone. Not that's a good thing, we like snow, but we uh, can't really get out to train much because of all the uh, terrible access issues in this country as soon as we get any snow. Uh, so we're back. To, glad to be back up here. Uh, this is going to be kind of, we're going to be splitting and changing a bit on this video. Um, as you probably see by the title, we're doing a review of two new harnesses uh, from the company out in Transylvania, Europe, uh, called Musher. And uh, some of this has been shot before I'm filming this, some will be shot way after. So we've got the kind of whole span of a test. Uh, I'm rambling on a bit now, so let's just uh, get to it. But first, hey guys, say hey. <laughs> hey, Seth. Cool. Right. Now they've been uh, attributed, we can get down to it. So, walking around, I've got these set up on the outside of the van. So, let me get my screen on. Right, we have two harnesses in test. Uh, the test was sent out by the guys at Sporty Paws. Um, their website will be going live anytime now, and you can already order uh, from them directly. Sportypaws.co.uk. Uh, let's get down to these. These are a company called Musher. In Transylvania, we'll uh, re, uh, we'll keep off any Dracula jokes for as long as we can. Um, so two different harness types here. Uh, the red on the left is the uh, Seppala, and the one on the right, and I hope I'm saying this right, is the Amundsen. Amundsen. Um, I had a car stereo called that before as well, and I still can never pronounce it. So, um, but you get the idea. So two completely different designs. I'll show you them on the dogs shortly as well so you can get a better idea but uh, in short the the, the Seppala is kind of a um, I say it's halfway between a multi-sport and an X-Pack um, it's got a much bigger chest uh, chest padding than you can see on normal ones um, the quality of this this material is fantastic that is actually really quite rigid but it's soft really squidgy on the underside um, which is obviously great for the dog and then great that it's going to be looks like it's going to be really hard wearing and last a long time um, reflective strips just a nice touch um, so it's kind of upside down but hard to hang harnesses the other way uh, the clip doesn't come on it that's uh, mine just because I like to run a clip on the dog that I'm trying this out with so you can ignore that if you did want to buy one of those uh, they are from uh, I can't remember now off the top of my head that'll come back to me um, <laughs> so yeah, that's that. Um, you'll be you get a better idea in fit on that one. Um, there's no adjustments on it whatsoever. It's a pretty standard uh, harness, but the fit looks good and is nice. Uh, that's being tested out on my 
girly, my black girl. We can never find her. So you can see the size, that's her. She looks quite small compared to the other two, but the other two are huge for the breed. Um, she's a very large female, clocking in about 25 kilos. Um, and as you can see, if you consider that, and then all the other two are, uh, yeah, she's a pretty big dog still. So, and that's the XL in the uh, in the Sapola. So now, we'll come on to this, which is the Amwoodson. I'm going to keep, I'm gonna keep saying it like that, and I don't know if it's right. Um, so, similar situation over the top of the back with that really not that kind of wrapped style with the super squishy bit underneath which is really nice uh, behind these clips as well you know loads of squish there they're not going to start getting they're not going to dig in to the dog now the difference on this one obviously is you can probably tell this is super super adjustable um the so this is interesting the interesting thing we've got going on here is this is also an xl this is being tried on uh the white dog behind saskia nanook um who, as you can tell, is at least clocking five kilos and a fair few inches in height above her. He's a primary test, white boy at the end there. Um, but we've done one run with these already. I'll say that much. Obviously, they're a little bit dirty, which is why. Um, and it's the fit's a bit weird. Now, I'm going to adjust it again today. The problem sometimes with these things that are so adjustable, once you get it right, it's brilliant. But trying to find that sweet spot can be a bit weird so what we find is the the uh, neck and chest area is totally identical between both of these both being an XL which would make sense they're both the same size both the same brand but the body on the Amazon is seems to be designed for a dog even bigger possibly than the one I'm testing out on I've got these straps reduced these body straps reduced right down and then this one because it's quite a long dog and this is I believe designed to fit further back than the tail um well not necessarily this bit but the it's a it's a very long in the back harness um is the intention so that's and it's quite a long dog so we have got that relatively far out um but i'm going to put them on them you can see what they're like in situ and then we're going to go for another run and see how we get on today okay we're harnessed up Let's give you a quick view of this so we'll start with the spoiler again um so this is on the smaller dog <laughs> large dog uh, fit wise I say on the back that looks pretty good um, there's your side profile so you can see can we look around the front sweetie you can see under here uh, chest bone is hitting right there you can see my finger so exactly so it's cut just under top of the chest which is pretty much perfect and you know what visually it's a really nice looking harness it sits really well on her um she's got quite a thick neck i don't know if she's a bit older um it's probably why so she's you know the slightly smaller bodied thicker neck harness suits her really well uh now look now in the am the amudsen i can still never be able to say that without thinking about it um so yeah so you can see what's happening here again so let's go situation the front first and stay there mate so his chest bone is a bit is a lot further down actually so this is potentially an issue yeah so his chest bone's way further down but that's his is very far down hello <laughs> um but if we will put you down for a minute you can still see i'm pulling that in it's actually not getting and there's no contact there with um you know in, interfering with his airways it's all on his shoulders so um it may well just be especially given the design of this harness that it's much more um as a as a shoulder strength um kind of driven system more than kind of more the chest and traditional method so um we'll see again how he performs today uh it's fitting quite well his last rib so Last ribs is here where my hand is. Uh, I'm gonna struggle to do I've got enough hands to do this. So if I hold that there, his last rib is pretty much where that clip is, which I think um, would probably be about right with that, and then that's coming uh, just to be on the base of the tail, which again I believe, as far as I can find out, is the um, kind of 
design fit. Okay, we'll get to it. We'll see how we get on. Go! Go! Hey, hey, hey. decided to add the detailed review here in post in order to give you the best possible full rundown after the test had been completed. I'm going to repeat myself a bit here, but I just wanted to confirm and review the parameters for the test. The parameters were pretty simple. Two harnesses replaced my normal go-to non-stop free motion harnesses for two of my most competent running dogs. The test ran from February to May 2018, covering the end of the 17-18 mushing season and throughout that we had a lot of pretty vile weather. As a result, these harnesses got properly tested. These products not only in, the, in terms of their performance, but durability and in general what they like to live with. Having had to put them through washing cycles and regular maintenance, we've drummed up a real near to worst case scenario. The Amazon harness is striking in design. At first it's a little difficult to determine what exactly it's intended for. It's for, it is, but it is most definitely a full bore sled dog harness. It is not a weight pull or pull style like some of its design cues may suggest. It is what I call a seriously open back harness. It's quite hard to explain, but it's a power hungry harness, benefiting real sprint dogs over more traditional endurance dogs for sure. My review of this harness will have to be a little skewed. It didn't fit my dogs especially well. Now. By all measurement accounts, we had exactly the right size and it would have been uh, the only option of its of the range for my dogs. Any smaller would have restricted the airways and well, to be honest, they don't go any larger and it was plenty large enough on the back anyway. It was just the wrong shape. The Amundsen appears to be designed around a dog that has a larger body or a smaller neck comparatively. Every element of his design suggests this is really intended for a purpose-bred hound. Uh, for your Euro hounds or Greysters. Uh, for those with more traditionally shaped sled dogs, I'd probably advise you to steer clear. Whilst it is an absolutely brilliant harness, has a clear use case in mind, it is not an all-rounder. And all that said, in use, the Amundsen still provided us with what I can only describe as well, an unbelievable power transfer from dog to bite like we've never experienced. I still can't quite believe how much of a difference it appears to make. Now for what a guesstimate is worth, it feels like an increase of torque in the realm of 15-20%. to 20%. Now that sounds ridiculous, I know it sounds ridiculous, that's a huge amount, a harness can't harness that much extra power from a dog, but that is what the experience feels like. Um, you know, I've run my dogs day in, day out for years now and we've never had that kind of hit under any circumstance except for with this harness. Now while that sounds very promising, for dogs that aren't always going flat out, such as mine, the design has some flaws. It doesn't sit particularly well under a general trot or gallop. The free moving nature of the harness when not under load can appear to cause some possible minor irritation or discomfort for the dog, um, typically during the energy saving sections of a run. I don't believe there's any actual pain here, but rather than the way that the harness can move around the dog and oscillate around the body, could be an unnecessary distraction whilst running. The open back nature also leads to another potential problem. This is by far one of the easiest harnesses to back out of I've ever used. Having sides that can be a bit of an issue. Now this isn't a fault as such, it's actually the very nature for which this uh, harness is designed and, and use case is required. Um, it would be absolutely brilliant for dogs that it suits but it just makes it that bit less ideal for ones that it doesn't entirely. Now this is just something I want buyers to be aware of and I'm by no means slating this harness it is a in, in terms of uh, you know harness engineering I've never seen anything like it it's absolutely fantastic. So moving on to the Sepala this is something like part X back part in this sport harness. Now there's already hundreds of both of these options already available to uh, sled dog owners and so do we really need another one? Well, actually, yeah, in this case we do. Uh, the Sepala is more x pack than anything else, but it's an x pack with a design and material tech from more modern multi-sport styles. The front end of any harness is probably the most important. And 
with this it's also the most impressive part of the harness i really do believe it's the front end on this is superior to any other harness i've seen and there's quite a few it's something about the angles of the shoulder the neck straps and the perfect padding running all the way down the chest that makes this an absolute standout piece unlike the amazon the sepala is absolutely in tune with traditional sled dog breeds and will fit, I'm sure, most uh, sibes, crosses, and the like, absolutely perfectly. The sizing on this is also quite interesting. It fits two of my dogs, who are fairly different sizes, very well. And in their non-stop harnesses, they are absolutely different sizes, without question. Now, there's a lot less to say about this harness, for sure, but that is absolutely not a bad thing. It is just, it just worked for us so incredibly well. There are much fewer nuances and caveats, and as a result, it is an out-and-out -out top of the category contender for sure. Of the two harnesses, this is the one that I will be keeping. I'm not getting rid of my other harnesses, but I want to long-term test this for, for ages just to see exactly what happens to it. But I can see without too much hesitation that this is likely to be the next sort that I buy rather than continuing with any of the others I've tried before. Um, that's all I can cap off this saying, really. Um, but as far as the brand goes, the brand are fantastic. The quality of these things are insane. Go buy one. Go look at them. Go see what they're doing. I'm really impressed. Absolutely top stuff. Out of these two harnesses, you should probably know which one to go for. If you've got a hound, go one way. If you've got a traditional sleddy dog, go the other. I'm sure you won't be disappointed. That's it for now. Any questions, leave it in the comments below. There'll be a full write-up of this review on howlingyetis.com. There'll be a link to that in the description below. Check out sportypaws.co.uk. I'll see you soon. Cheers.